Hello there. This is Tejas from Trendline, and in this video, we'll be talking about one of the fastest growing FMCG companies, Varun Beverages. We'll discuss how the company became the world's second largest franchisee of PepsiCo outside the USA. An important question right now is if the company can continue to grow at the current fast rate as its share price continues to hit new lifetime highs. On December 6th, Varun Beverages became the sixth biggest FMCG company in market capitalization as it pipped Gore-Tex consumer products. Both com uh, companies are competing for that sixth spot right now. But it's not a competition when it comes to share price change over the month. As Varun Beverages beat other companies by a huge margin, BBL rose 25% in the past month, outperforming its industry, sector and the Nifty 50. VBL blows other companies out of the water when it comes to the long-term price change as well. Since its listing on bourses in November 2016, its share price has jumped over 10 times. In the past year alone, VBL surged 137%. Before we get into the reason for its staggering performance, management strategy and valuation, let's go through the timeline of the company's major milestones. This company was incorporated in 1995 as a subsidiary of RJ Corp and was named after its founder Ravi Jaipuriya's son, Varun. RJ Corp is also the largest franchisee for Pizza Hut, KFC, Cream Bell and Costa Coffee in India. In 1998, PepsiCo acquired a 26% stake in Devyani Beverages, which later merged with VBL in 2004. In 2013, VBL started acquiring PepsiCo sub trades in India. This accelerated from 2015 to 2019. As a result, PepsiCo's volume sold in India by VBL rose from 26% in CY11 to 85% in CY21. Apart from the domestic business, VBL is also expanding its footprint internationally. VBL incorporated a new subsidiary, Varun Beverages RDC SAS in Democratic Republic of Congo. Its rapid expansion by acquiring franchises for selling Pepsi products led to a strong rise in both the top line and the bottom line. Some of Pepsi's carbonated soft drink brands produced and sold by VBL include Pepsi, Diet Pepsi, 7-Up, the new energy drink Sting. The PepsiCo's juice brands include Tropicana, Slice and Nimbus. It also has packaged drinking water under the Aquafina brand. VBL's agreement with PepsiCo requires it to pay 14% of its net revenues to Pepsi and spend 6% on below-the-line marketing. Below-the-line marketing is targeted campaigns aimed at potential customers. These include direct mails and search engine marketing. Let's now move on to the company's financial performance over the years and revenue mix. Regarding the segment revenue, carbonated soft drinks or CSG make up 70% of the total revenue. Revenue from water brands such as Aquafina contributes 25% and the juices make up of the remaining 5%. Around 17% of the total volume sold, uh, sold come in from international markets like Sri Lanka, Nepal, Morocco, Zambia and Zimbabwe. VBL's revenue and net profit have been on a constant rise barring CY20. Post CY20, both the top and bottom line rose sharply surpassing the pre-pandemic level in volume and revenues. VBL's quarterly revenue has been rising year on year for the past seven quarters. In the most recent quarter, revenue rose 33% year on year and net profit increased 58%. While a 24% year-on-year volume growth led to a revenue rise, a 7% rise in realizations on the back of price hikes led to increased profits. In addition, its higher margin energy drink sting was a star product in Q2, driving both top line and margins higher. The management said sting's overall realization was higher than the average realization by 65%, helping the EBITDA margin rise 140 BPS year-on-year to 22%. If you look at the volume growth by geography, international businesses have actually fared better than the domestic market. Indian sales volume rose at 14% CAGR over the past six years, driven by acquiring market share in Pepsi's franchises in Indian subterritories. But international sales volume grew at an even higher CAGR of 24% in the past six years. Let's now focus on VBL's strategy to continue its revenue growth. Does VBL have room for growth after a sensational rise in the past five years? For that, the company has to look for new avenues of growth. VBL is diversifying its product mix away from the carbonated drinks or CSDs. The CSD market rose at a decent CAGR of 6% over the past five years, but the growth is witnessing a slowdown as people are shifting their preferences to sugarless and nutrition rich drinks, especially fruit drinks. Because of this, CSD's, CSD's revenue share contribution is on the downtrend, falling from 84% in CY14 to 70% in CY21. The packaged drinking water market has substantial potential to grow due to increasing health consciousness and awareness regarding the quality of water. 
Further, a pickup in domestic tourism after lockdowns could also boost the sale as travelers usually prefer, prefer packaged water. Currently, revenue from this segment makes up 23% of the total revenue, up from 9% in CY14. Other potential growth products are high margin drinks like Sting and Tropicana. Sting is the fastest growing energy drink in the beverages market. This product contributed to 8% of the sales in Q3 CY22. Analysts expect this to contribute to higher margins for the company. And currently, Tropicana's distribution has reached only 15% of the total outlet. This is mainly due to the capacity constraint. Tropicana's in-house backward integrated plant and two new plants in Jammu and Kashmir and Bihar will be the key growth drivers going forward. VBL has cost advantages due to its backward integration. The company focuses on the backward integration in manufacturing preforms, uh, crowns, plastic closures, corrugated boxes, etc. in certain facilities to ensure operational efficiencies. This allows the company to cut costs and maintain quality as well. VBL plans to invest in greenfield and brownfield projects with a capex of Rs. 1300 crore by February 2023. It intends to expand production capacity by 20%, which is likely to be operational before the next summer. The management targets adding 8 to 10% outlet, outlets annually across geographies. VBL also aims to double the dairy segment's manufacturing capacity by mid CY23 by focusing on the focusing on the West and South India. It is also focusing on faster growing international market and entry into the non-beverages segment. The company will begin distributing Lays, Doritos and Cheetos from January 2023 in Morocco. In India, it has started a trial production of Kurkure Puffcorn in UP. Finally, we will discuss about the valuation, key risks and outlook of EBL. Coming to the valuation of EBL, the company trades in the PE sell zone, meaning its TT, TTM PE ratio or trailing 12 month PE ratio is higher than its historical averages. As per Trendline's forecaster estimates, the stock is currently trading at a 12 month forward PE ratio of 49.6. The TTM PE ratio is very close to its industry average of 63. Companies with high growth prospects tend to have high PE ratios. To take the growth aspect into account, we can look at PEG ratio. A PEG ratio or PE to growth ratio is a company's PE ratio divided by the growth rate of its earnings. PEG ratio of VBL is 0.5. A ratio of 1 or lower suggests a stock could be fairly priced or even undervalued. So growth prospects are playing important role in company valuation. In fact, out of 14 analysts covering this company, 9 rate the company as a strong buy. So it is important for VBL to sustain this high growth to justify its valuation. Its strong relationship with Pepsi is an advantage. Though the franchisee agreement was recently extended to 2039, any future contractual agreement changes could have a major impact on the VBL's business dynamics. Another risk is increasing awareness regarding high sugar content in carbonated soft drinks, leading to a fall in their consumption. To counter this, VBL has been diversifying away from the carbonated soft drink segment. With rising awareness and a shift towards healthy consumption habits, VBL is focusing more on nutritional dairy products. The company is, is now licensed to use the brand name Creambell for ambient temperature value-added dairy-based beverages. Ravi Jaipuria, chairman of Varun Beverages, said newly launched segments are seeing traction in the markets, especially the high-margin sting and dairy products. With the help of new products, VBL will continue to grow its top line through expansion in international and Indian markets. A product mix shift towards the higher margin drinks like Sting and Tropicana is also expected to increase the profit margins. Another key growth driver will be the non-beverage segment, which includes products like Lays, Doritos and Cheetos. VBL certainly has multiple avenues of growth uh, going forward, but timely execution and entry into different markets will remain key. So in this video, we looked into the financial performance, growth strategy and risks of one of the India's fastest growing companies, Varun Beverages. You can find more information about this company or any other listed company on Trendline.com. This is Tejas signing off.